in such a small group we can easily do that we also have time there is no need to hurry through anything uh, so how are your other yola from which which part of the country if i may just know up you're from up which part noida okay noida what about can i just get a rough sense of i'm from pune you're from pune she is from yola from gurgaon okay nice bhopal okay 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 from bangalore itself okay okay so yeah so i'll start so uh, i guess the theme of your workshop or conference whatever is about children and i think we look at kids in many many uh, different ways uh, i'm a mother of two boys who are uh, 18 and 21 so when i have also designed for children before i had my own children and i realized that it was quite quite different from once you have your own children and then once your children are grown into adults then again you look at children very differently so apart from the professional approach i think it, we also need to look at it very very personally and how we observe children in uh, in life and how what are our uh, observations of them so i think when you look at kids are uh, how we experience architecture even as adults when you start as children it's uh, from you know when you're born your senses of the uh, smell and uh, sound is much more than that of your uh, uh, touch and visual and then slowly the visual uh, sense kind of takes over and uh, it uh, dominates and as adults in fact very often we don't use our other senses apart from the visual which is something that we try very hard that you really design for all the senses there should be a smell in the space that you go and for children that becomes much more exciting because they notice all these things so i think when you when i would say that when i design for children i'm also in a way designing for an adult because that's how i want the adult to see the space as the child because the child experiences it much better than uh, than the adult and in its truest form because they're still uncorrupted by other means so if you see kids live mainly in an adult world so if they have large spaces they'll create their little uh, you know so they they want to work at scale they want to create their own scale and that's something that one needs to be aware of even as adults in your home you very often you don't necessarily you want space but you don't want it to be so large that uh, you you lose the intimacy in the space so i think the scale becomes something that's quite important in uh, uh, and then so one one is the scale one is how how they learn to use their bodies eventually so from learning to crawl and then learning to walk and learning to climb uh, somewhere i feel as a new new age adult and also as an architect uh, i i would one thing i am very clear is that you shouldn't make it so safe uh, you one is that you your environment does create curiosity in the child to explore more to climb a wall uh, don't make a wall that they can't climb at all or uh, the adult is constantly telling them don't don't go there and don't go there you kind of make spaces much more accessible and adventurous you while you do think of drastic accidents but a few falls are not there's no harm in them falling so i would say that it's it's really nice when we are designing if you're designing for children or if you're designing in any other space to think about how uh, they should explore their own uh, their own body and their own mind and encourage that encourage them to be adventurous and not scared and protected i feel a lot of today when we have only one and two children as even as parents uh, people become very very defensive with their use of space because they are only if you do a railing then they are worried that the kids are going to fall through the railing if you do steps people are worried about so you have to uh, why yes yeah, sure you need to be worried about that but you also so i i'll come to that other there's a, there are some examples i'll illustrate so this is a school so one of the things that i wanted to say is that when you're designing for children specifically when they are the user group uh, it's very easy to think uh, what this brief should be what the responses should be especially so this is a play school that i did maybe uh, in 1993 
and uh, so clearly the age group is uh, from three to five years old uh, so it's a very clearly defined age group very clearly defined scale what they want to do the activities there so in a space like that it becomes a lot easier to respond to what they need they need texture they need color they need uh, you know variety in the space they need to be able to explore so it's not that difficult to respond specifically to a very limited very limited age group then uh, this is something that i did in uh, maybe in 96 95 96 it's a very large school and all this is before i had my own children uh, so we were designing a school which is spread over 20 acres of land and uh, the age group is from 6 to 16 so when you do a thing for from the ages of 6 to 16 actually every 2 3 years the requirement changes the response has to change because the child is growing at such a rapid pace that uh, something for a 6 year old will not work for a 12 year old you're you're lo looking at two totally different uh, uh, ideas and two totally different responses and how do you work with that so this was the junior school which was from the age of 6 to 9 and we worked with a very organic form we put in trees instead of columns uh, the wall that you see below that wall was actually built by the children uh, we made them make adobe blocks and uh, you know play with mud so they're also engaging in the texture there's a slide that comes there there's no photo of that there's a slide that so if, if it's at two levels so if you want to come down to that lower level there's a slide there you can see so either you come down by the steps or you come down by the slide so it's a very simple thing it's not very kiddy looking in terms of color and sh you know very loud shapes and all that's really very simplistic and i think we need to move beyond that so we just worked with simple uh, it was a nice shape we worked with a more softer rounder shape because that's something that also gives more opportunity for flexibility though that was one part the other part the roof is uh, is a tile roof so it had to be like regular shaped classrooms but we gave a lot of flexibility in the whole uh, design and this was for these young 6 to 12 a lot of them jump from the railing down uh, you know and so this going up and down and that little thing there is a stage uh, that uh, so somebody can kind of have a little performance there if they want these are all meant to be informal they are not really organized and formal things this is the rest of the school which also uh, uh, has these different buildings spread over this is the natural landscape of the school which had all these rocks and uh, a lot of greenery so uh, one of the big activities designed by the school is to climb the rocks to see how uh, so the kids become very physically active so I've had people if you see that previous this uh, slide here this roof this roof is a seven foot high roof and actually from that uh, seat there have been kids who have climbed onto the roof and then try to do all kinds of nonsense so uh, so it is uh, so while it's it was nice to know that they're they're exploring but yeah it does get a little scary so after that we put in a railing there uh, so that the kids don't go there so this is the this is the larger school with a lot of open space and different kinds of uh uh, activity for now this is different age group this is the dining hall here with that you see down so the kids can so it's very informal and it kind of sometimes you see the kids sitting like this sometimes they're inside sitting in a circle so I think scale wise the seat is it's just the seat so if you see the scale is very intimate it's also very open it allows uh, the kids to do as they please and yet maintain some sense of order a lot of open uh, so this was we are designing specifically for children uh, this is their dining uh, and kitchen space so we allowed that all the walls can be painted by the students themselves so this was an art project that they did over three months where every child in the school it has about 60 children every child in the school actually took a little corner and was part of this larger whole and they've painted uh, there's a lot of painting that they did in as a whole year's project and this is their washing area so you see simple things like this is their response that they've made a little step for the little ones to climb up and wash which we had actually not thought about so these are things that 
kind of come come about this is the kitchen inside so the kitchen if you see that we made all the counters lower so it is a it's a joint use by adults and children it's not that it's only children so uh, somewhere you need to strike a balance where it's comfortable and accessible to all you encourage you don't create things that you feel that are going to be unsafe and that no kids should come here or no mesh should be allowed you should i mean it's how you also design the space that you allow the flexibility with kids you need to allow a lot more flexibility a lot more uh, you know not very rigid uh, guidelines as to what the design should be so this is another so i'm going to talk about spaces that we've designed specifically for children before i come to the community which is not only for children it's for children and adults so this is a school that we did in kundapura which is uh, on the west coast of india in near mangalore 100 kilometers from mangalore so there was uh, this was also again very old 95 maybe and uh, that was a time where the child labor was a very big problem in uh, in india and more specifically in that area because all the kids would be uh, sold or uh, for to hotel groups to work in hotels and this ngo uh, concern for working children kind of worked in that area trying to create some reverse migration create options for children to and get work eventually and so that they don't go into these hotels to work so we were part of that team and one of the skills that the kids were learning was appropriate construction technology so they were learning to make stabilized soil cement blocks they were so working with a couple of lo local masons uh, we actually worked with a team of 12 children there who were from the ages of 14 to 18 that was the age group where we were designing this school which would train uh, which would be like a training center not only for appropriate construction technology for weaving for farming they had a lot of pottery a lot of all those skills stitching also so the brief was to design a a school which would be a training center where they would study and they would stay so it was like a hostel come uh, school so what we did is we took the 12 children with us with the with their teacher and with the mason that they were going to work with and we took them to various buildings that were done with this appropriate technology we took them to meet lorry baker because he was alive then and we were working with him so we took him we took them to meet him and on the way uh, so we did a like, 10 day long workshop with them where we were traveling with them we would stay at various places for them to look at the look at the buildings and uh, you know in the evenings have these discussions on what they thought a school should be what they thought the space should be so a lot of the plan so what we did with them is that we arrived at these individual plans so these are so these are like the dorm and classrooms so we also did uh, like we questioned them like should we make a circular room or should we make a octagonal room and why would you prefer a square and they came up with very very interesting uh, responses that a circular room somebody drew that will be all sleep readily then you know how will we sleep in it if it's circular maybe it's nice to sit and work but uh, but how will we sleep so they gave us even in the octagon they had those issues so we arrived at these separate units with toilets and uh, we worked we made models with them which they helped us make and on the ground we actually went and we marked it on the ground so the plan arrived was derived after we actually did the marking on the ground and the plan was arrived with them like they said that let it be like a one of our villages uh, we should be comfortable in it uh, it should and it should we should be able to build later so how do you allow, so the street actually this is the old one the street has grown and there's two more streets now which where they so we kind of gave them the ability to also design these spaces by themselves so they've done so this is what it looked like uh, so they've done a lot of buildings after the after that without us and the whole thing has grown quite quite well uh, so it was a very very interesting experience to work with the children then and actually we learned a lot because they made very very common sense uh, of course this is rural background excellent suggestions excellent ideas if you look at uh, some of the uh, details that you know of these uh, windows the bay window was of course something that we gave but they kind of took from it and they made a little seat there if you see in that corner there 
so they actually if we worked with them on ground while we were physically building with them they came up with a lot of their sense of awareness of space was quite quite amazing and a lot of them have become contractors today and they do design built in their own area so it's quite a source of pride actually so this is uh, this is my own house so when you're talking about uh, how children respond to a home so those were those were when I'm talking about when you're designing specifically for children what at whatever age from the youngest age to say 18 years old but when you design a house how do you how do you respond to children and what is the do we really think about how how the kids will uh, you know take to it so I think I think one is that you don't think that oh let's do this for the kids kind of not you think about it but not so strongly you think about how it could be interesting for you and how you then you think about every member of that place that's going to use it and how they may respond to something like that and then if you kind of visualize that yes that response will be you know this may be a very nice response to them or this may they uh, they may not like this but it's okay it's you have to be a little democratic there has to be something for everybody in that house it's not only for children so this is a little pond that we did outside our house uh, just before you enter we had it like a little bridge to go in and we found that both our boys would be there like the whole day it was not intended but uh, this was something that they respond all their friends would come and all their friends also would be there because we had fish in that there was a turtle in there and it became like a source of so much of curiosity that they built their lives around that so I think if we just leave it open and we never said that don't don't sit there or you know you could even go into the pond it was only one foot deep so it was not even like a, a unsafe this was the house actually quite an interesting story so if you see we did a, did a terracotta floor and uh, for our own interest we put in these uh, slate tiles as in inserts in between just to give some interest because we felt that it's going to look so monotonous in such a large room and you know let's do something interesting there and the only thing we did kid friendly was to put that hammock there so that uh, we could take it out and the kids could run around there was no furniture in that space not so much furniture in the space because they were still young and they so we wanted them to be able to play ball so that's the consideration so you don't so the space also can evolve like once they've grown up now we can put furniture because they not want to play cricket in the house or you know they are not wanting to run so we made it flexible and we had that hammock with those tiles the most uh, interesting thing was that that hammock and those tiles became like a game so they would sit on the hammock and they would swing and see who could touch the furthest tile uh, or they would walk so it was like a game which they derived and so much of interest in that space just by us putting those so that was actually quite a learning that if you do these few things that are actually we didn't do it intentionally but that was a it, it was like a very they would be occupied the whole day playing that one uh, hammock and stone game they used to call it so this is just to so what so the consideration as an architect that we did was to not keep too many barriers and to make the space interesting for all of us visually tactile so we also like that on the floor when you're walking barefoot it's nice to have a variation it kind of makes you aware of uh, how what the floor feels like you know rather than if you take it for granted what what it is going to be like so this is similar how kids do adapt to adult spaces uh, somebody doing homework on the coffee table because that's the easiest and the most comfortable so sometimes I feel it's better to not give specific kid designated areas and let them use the whole space let it be more uh, let it be more democratic why is it because they always aspire to be a part of what you what everyone is right there's no need to so it's nice if you do everything low that kind of will work for everybody uh, not necessarily you know not necessarily that it's not for kids or it's not for adults it should I mean when you think of a design especially when you're working with all these people it's nice to it's nice to have that so now coming to this project that you're going to see uh, you're, nobody has any any questions am I going too fast mm -hmm. you're okay right so this is the project that you're going to see uh, I've taken a few snaps of kids using the space to see the actual spaces uh, when we go around so just to tell you a bit of the project we moved from all that consultancy into doing development because we felt that a lot of our ideas were not being taken 
uh, there were no clients to kind of execute all that we wanted to do. So we moved into development where we could do rainwater harvesting, sewage treatment. We could build the kind of houses that we wanted to build with the variety without without actually so many constraints of the client. And so we conceived, we've done many, many housing projects. This one has been ongoing since 2009. So it's about nine years old on ground. And uh, what we did is we did a lot of uh, We've done a lot of variety, a lot of typologies of housing to cater to different budgets, different lifestyles, keeping it very environment friendly, using the choice of materials being sustainable, uh, which are at variant from this norm that we are kind of assuming. And you have even differently able people, there'll be the blind, there'll be people who can't walk, there'll be people with mental disabilities. How do you, so when you're talking about being inclusive, then you take in this whole user group into your brief and you need to respond to each and every one of them, children being one of them. So when you design, I think what we have done is you design at something that appeals to you, that kind of has a universal appeal and then you kind of imagine every idea in, in a context of a child, in a context of how would, how would a blind person be like that, how would an older person uh, respond to that and you see that in every given element or every given area, at least two out of the three are getting uh, a boost are enjoying that space or sometimes all of them if if it is if it's a, if the choices are to be made between that it's only going to be for like one group then you limit the kind of spaces that come into that so i don't think it's been done so consciously in fact when i've been asked to speak like that i've actually gone into thinking that okay what did we actually do for kids the kids were very much a part of our thinking so our uh, profile of people using it is families with children there are a lot of schools nearby so there's a huge population of children here about 50% of our uh, residents have children from the ages of maybe 6 to 15, 16. That's a very, very, that's a major uh, chunk of the people using here. So there are children from like baby babies to, uh, to young adults. And how do you create spaces for each of them? That was the challenge. So if you see, this is quite interesting. This is a swale that we've done to drain the water from a park. And every time it rains, all the kids are in that playing in that brain there uh, which is like again not so yeah kids can can be quite quite interesting so this is this is the plan of this entire space i don't have a pointer unfortunately we are at that top uh, corner there uh, right now and we'll be going in and i'll be showing you this whole space so uh, this uh, this side corner is the highest and it kind of slopes down this way and slopes down that way and uh, we've got so that top corner what you see that's called footprints that has that's a cluster home uh, concept where uh, the car is parked in a common car park and you walk inside to your cluster so it's primarily car free inside there are three entries and you uh, would walk inside to your uh, to your uh, home and they're all ground and one upper storied homes uh, they are in small courtyards they are arranged around small uh, like uh, uh, courtyards which are like 20 meters by 20 meters and so it's like a large uh, inner courtyard where about 10 to 12 houses are arranged around that that's that one and that's this one so this one and that one are in that model the this one and this one are uh, larger houses where the car goes into the house and you park you have a car park and then you have a larger house they all work on this cluster planning principle uh, and we have a central spine so actually now there is a so this central spine has these parks that come off it and so what we we are now trying to do is that make that central spine as residents we've got uh, we've got speed breakers and so kids are cycling everywhere they go from one place to the other there's groups of children cycling there's groups of children playing and how do you make it safe for them because it's only awareness so one is that we've made the road fairly narrow except for that central one and we hope that i mean right now we are we are struggling with that but the internal roads are all uh, why is it not doing the internal roads are all uh, uh, winding and not easy for the car to use. So that's one thing that we've done very consciously in the design is that uh, all the internal driveways where the cars would go, they are narrow, they're not very wide 
and you need to slow down because you have to negotiate either another car coming from the other side or you have to turn or you have to so you can't go at a speed the design has ensured that you can't go at a speed uh, so the car people complain a lot but the priority has been for the uh, for the human being and for the child you know so so for instance here if you see we've got these uh, so I, uh, paving blocks that are happening on the side but the and there's it's a seamless edge so that's a detail that we worked on very uh, very carefully so the joint between the grass and the uh, paving is actually almost at the same level so even if you're playing the road becomes a part of the playground so if you're playing cricket or if you're playing football we haven't kept a step there in this case because we felt that the park was too small and it would be nice for it to expand and let the and there are only about uh, maybe 20 cars maximum that would come into this space and it's a very small like you have to you know kind of drive turning so the car will slow down no matter what so from the car also you actually engage because there are people on the street nobody goes off the street the street becomes a very much a part of the park or very much a part of where people are interacting and kids become so kids are on tricycle and the uh, because we've done that you see that children will be on cycle or on whatever they are playing on the road with their ball they're sitting in the middle of the road they are not nobody is worried that they are sitting because they are quite sure that whoever comes will stop and maybe move the child if need be or ask the child to go so uh, that's something that we've also worked on in the planning when you have such a small cluster uh, and everyone knows everyone and everyone knows the child sitting there also uh, by design right everyone knows whose child it is and somebody is crying or somebody has fallen down you know your house is right here so there's a lot of safety in that whole in that whole thinking so yeah so this is just to tell you the this is the car free uh, uh, space that we have so uh, all the uh, so there is there is a kind of a hierarchy so in each home also we have a courtyard and if you see how we don't design the insides of the homes but when you see people <coughs> when the kids have uh, if there are like very little kids in the house I'm seeing that a lot of these sunken uh, uh, stairwells where we have like an internal courtyard which is just a double height atrium space in the house many people have made that into a kids space so they are not only in the children's bedroom so to speak but they are also on the ground floor uh, in, as part of the living room one corner becomes the children's corner uh, so even the court even in their uh, open spaces they have a kind of design for the kids to accommodate so that's one scale and then you come the next the hierarchy the next hierarchy is the cluster park which is this small park which is very safe where uh, even a young child uh, can be sitting there and playing while the you know the caregiver or the mother or father whoever it is is inside the house they are not venturing very far away and they're right there and they're in the open they're in nature there's enough to explore and it's fairly safe so that's something that becomes so that's something that children and old people so even old people if you see they don't really want to walk a lot sometimes they just want to come out from indoors and take in some fresh air and sit in the sun so those small cluster parks were actually designed keeping in mind these very young children and older people so because you don't go very far you can be playing there and then come back in you're not you know not had a bath whatever it doesn't matter it's not like an outing then you go to the next level of park which is this park one two and three which are the large your parks which have like play equipment which have uh, which become like so the older kids are all there you know so the older children who don't need to be escorted by their parents or whatever they are in that larger park or they're all over the place you don't need a thing and then it goes to the community so this is within this cluster then you go so this is this is what I've been trying to show here that's the house and a lot of the houses are like that with a little courtyard inside then that becomes the cluster park and then this is the larger uh, larger open space so different age groups respond to it differently so yeah so you see this is the small park cluster park this is also a cluster park where the kids are uh, somebody is being fed there because they're not eating in the house and you know it just becomes easier for the mother to come out and sit on the step there and and feed this is the younger kids there's a pond in one of the uh, in in the clusters so a lot of the kids sit there and there is the water is safe it's a foot but of course even a foot sometimes can be a little risky so we advise that people should be watching them but yeah but we have seen this this happens they enjoy then this becomes a large playground where they are playing cricket
they are playing football this is the older older group of children uh, you know moving around there so this blue line what you see is the pedestrian path so consciously when we've designed the housing layout to be a pedestrian uh, layout where the car is minimal the red line is the car what you see uh, it it naturally becomes conducive to children uh, whether you know it's not only to children to everybody else but primary uh, primary users of that pedestrian safety are the children yeah so this is just showing you the the, the kids are everyone uses their cycle cycling is a very very big big activity it also makes the parents quite happy because they are moving out of their tablets and cell phones and televisions and uh, you know coming out because there are enough options there's enough variety to do things outside so also for young uh, young people to uh, you know they, you don't know what to do with them inside the house so these are all common spaces so one thing is they are pushing the so some of the spaces have been designated as kids areas though i would say that it's only for the very young that we've designated the space as the kids grow older i would say that the any space is good for you know using your imagination uh, unstructured play that's in fact more valuable these kind of things work for this little age little small age group this is something that we've innovated with in the landscape that those three what you see are slides actually so the kids climb up on the on the grass itself and then then slide down into the sand pit there but otherwise this is like a space in the front so this is the apartment here and we have a space there yeah so yeah i i guess the other thing that when we are talking about being sustainable and being environment friendly whether it is to adults or to children uh, one is to use sustainable materials one is to build in the whatever appropriate techniques but what about actually making anybody love the environment and really taking care of it out of genuine inspi genuinely being inspired by that this is beautiful and it should be kept not only the the dry need that we need to conserve we need to recycle it needs to be it needs to be much more appealing one needs to feel it and i think for children it becomes more important so our landscape has become a very very important aspect in our whole uh, community where we make the landscapes very uh, interactive we plant with a lot of old indigenous species also exotics we are not puritan in that sense so a lot of old ind indigenous species you have like older people coming and saying you know you know this used to be there in our village and we used to make chutney out of this and uh, now they'll pluck and they'll make the chutney and they'll give everybody and the kids are become very much a part of this so we don't tell them don't touch don't pluck don't they you can pluck only pluck what you need i mean that's a also then when you see that and they see all the butterflies we have a lot of butterfly hosts we have a lot of insects we have a lot of snakes so we have a lot of snake awareness uh, camps where uh, everybody is taught to identify the snakes and the kids take to that first because they'll immediately know which snake came and then it will come on the whatsapp that this was a snake and it's, whether it's poisonous non poisonous what to do when it's there don't kill it they'll not let anyone kill it they'll say let's leave it alone go play somewhere else uh, don't come here so there is so the in, the landscape has been designed very very consciously to inspire that and that it also needs care things die they are not going to be it's not like forever you know uh, seasons change with the uh, some flowers come in some season some flowers come in another season uh, it, around all the kids areas we've planted these berries that they can pluck and eat water apple those are all things that are safe for them to eat there's this uh, one tree that's called adinathra pavunina i don't know if you all know it's in malayalam it's called uh, manjadi kuru it has this red uh, seed that falls and you know so we used to all play with those things as kids but now how many uh, so it makes a mess it's a very literary tree it will either have leaves falling down or it will have these red seeds falling down but we've done like that's one example of trees with pods and things like that because then they can take and play with those things those become in uh, elements that they interact with so that's something that's that's been quite uh, quite an important element then when we do the planting in all the in all the communities when we've done the planting we involve the residents uh, so mostly we sell before uh, we build so people are already part of the process as we are building so especially the planting we ensure that all the kids and the adults come and do the planting and a lot of them comment now that oh you know i planted this and now it's some 
it's like growing to this level so a lot um, some of the landscape kind of naturally takes into how kids will use the space by themselves so we have a resident run mela uh, once a year where it's so it's a very democratic space everybody uh, can come and do as they please but you see the kids using it really well so this is just some shots of that mela i've i've got because the kids shots were the most so they can make and sell Wait, why did that happen one second okay we're almost at the end thank god for that 